from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you all for coming for what promises to be a very exciting program. I'm Mary Jane Deeb, Chief of the African Middle East Division, and our division is responsible for 78 countries. We're divided into three sections, uh, the African section, the Near East section, which is quite extensive and goes, includes the, the Arab world, uh, Central Asia, Turkey, Iran, and we, uh, we go up to uh, Afghanistan, and we also include uh, Georgia and Armenia. And if you haven't had the chance uh, yet, we, you, there's a great exhibit on Armenia, on the Armenian book, uh, on this floor on the other side. Now, our division, like uh, our colleagues in the Hispanic division, the European division, Asian division, are responsible for acquisition, reference, outreach, assisting Congress. Um, those are umbrella terms that we use for all the many activities uh, that we have. And today is what we would call an outreach activity. In other words, we reach out to you all, and we reach out to researchers and those who have used our collections and those who may want to use our collections um, we invite them to come and talk about uh, specific topics that involve one of our countries, one of our regions, um, because we want to make um, our collections better known to the world. And there is no better way to get those collections known than to have speakers, to have researchers, to have scholars discuss the materials that they have collected, the projects that they have created um, using uh, resources in the region otherwise. And we videotape those programs so that they are not only available to, to people here, to all of us sitting uh, in this room, but also to people around the world and to people in the region itself. So um, we consider this a very important uh, part of the work that we do here at the library. And it is our specialists, those who know the regions, those who know the collectors, who uh, identify the wonderful scholars and researchers in the region and bring them here. And today we have Hiradi Navari, who is the Iranian world specialist here in our division and who has really uh, done a tremendous work uh, to um, help us better understand uh, the region of the world. Uh, he is the one who has put together this wonderful display, and uh, there are displays of the materials here, material culture, uh, primarily uh, Kurdish costumes, which were a gift to us. And he also has become the fan of our wonderful speaker today, Jane Lewison, who has so kindly uh, agreed to come and talk to us about a unique program, the Golha radio programs uh, that were created in Iran between 1956 and 1978. And she has done something absolutely stupendous with that. So uh, Hirad Dinavari will now introduce our speaker. Hirad? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mary Jane. Uh, thank you for everyone who has appeared and is uh, watching the event. Also, I'm glad to say that this is being recorded and will be put on a line for everyone else to see. Jane Lewison lived in Iran during the 70s for six years and is a graduate of Pahlavi University, Shiraz, Iran. She has been involved in research and promotion of various aspects of Persian studies for the last three decades. Since 2005, she has been directing the Golha project under the auspices of the British Library in uh, London and the music of, uh, department in the School of Oriental African Studies, University of London. 
she has um, archived and digitalized the whole archive of the Golha radio programs broadcast um, on Iranian radio from 1956 till 1979. She is now uh, working in a, a collaboration with the IHF to make this Golha archive and all the related research concerning the Golha archive available over the internet. Um, I personally have got to know um, Dr. Lewison, in my view she is a doctor, um, for a number of years. This is truly a magical um, project that she's taken on and I really hope in the future we could collaborate with them at the, at the library between us and the uh, University of SOAS, School of uh, African Oriental, Oriental African, 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 African Studies. Studies. Thank you very much. Without okay. taking any more time, she's going to take over from here. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank the library and Maryam and Hirat for all their kindness in inviting me and arranging this uh, 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 presentation. Um, I'll just start with the, uh, the, the signature tune to the programs, just to give you a sort of feel of what they're like, and then I'll go into the description of, uh, of them. And that's uh, a line from the Gulistan of Saadi, and basically it's saying, uh, what use are these trays of flowers? Uh, take a leaf from my flower garden. These flowers are uh, eternal and everlasting. And that was the signature tune to the Golhai Javidan, which was the first Golha program produced by uh, Dawood Pirnia in 1956. And um, I'll just give you a very brief uh, sort of background as to how it came about that these programs were made. Um, in, uh, in, in the 19... Um, as we begin the sort of modernization period of Iran, Reza Shah um, had a feeling about, the, about uh, music and cinema and theater, that these were all modernizing uh, elements, and he was very favorable towards them. And uh, uh, although he didn't specifically fund them, he, he, he encouraged their uh, expansion and development. And, um, and then al and also you have, then in 1941, uh, Reza Shah abdicated, and his son, uh, who was quite young at the time, in his 20s, uh, uh, took over. And the Allies came, and they uh, uh, took over the country for the whole of the Second World War. And uh, this was a, a very troubled time in Iran because of, there was a lot of famine. All the food that was produced was forcibly sold to the uh, uh, to the forces and uh, created famine. And uh, there was uh, martial law. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there was no censorship. And so within the literary and artistic circles, there was a, a, a flowering. Uh, that happened during that time that you didn't have under the Reza Shah period where censorship was very strong and then later on in the, in the Pahlavi period the censorship again becomes an issue. Um, and, and, and also because of that there was a huge amount of influences from all different types of countries coming in from Arabic, from Turkish, from Indian and whatever. And the intellectuals of that time, the traditional intellectuals of that time, they found this to be a concern because uh, they felt that the traditional literature was uh, under threat and nobody was um, championing it. And the traditional music they also felt to be under threat and nobody was championing it. And uh, Dawood Pirnia, who was the uh, son of uh, Moshe Dole, one of the most famous and most well-liked prime ministers in Iran, very important in the Constitutional Revolution, and they lived right off of uh, what, would have, what would have been comparable to Times Square in Tehran at that time, where all the theaters and the, and the cabarets and the music halls and, and cinemas were. So he was very aware of this uh, um, uh, watering down of the, uh, you might say, of the, of the traditions. And it was a concern, and he would um, have discussions with his uh, friends about this all the time. And at the same time, 
um, uh, Mr. Pirnia uh, was a, a very kind of spiritual person, and uh, um, and he he would gather with his friends. Um, and now this is in over oh, the URLs. Um, he would gather with his. And this is a uh, well. I'll go to this one first, and then go back to that one. Um, he would gather with his friends um, uh, in uh, the house of Sultan Hajanuri, who was an ex-ambassador, and he was a, a Sufi of the Safi Ali Shah order. And in that house, they would have gatherings um, of all the famous musicians and literary um, people, some of the names of whom you can see here. Um, uh, and uh, and they would have uh, they would play music and, and discuss literature and uh, mostly Sufi literature and everything, and so when in 1956 Pabiz Ad, who was head of the radio at the time, invited um, Dawood Pirnia to the radio to uh, 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 help at the radio, he decided that they would want to try to make a program reflecting their gatherings, these Sufi gatherings of theirs, so that everybody could. Um, uh, uh, participate and, 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 and uh, have um, uh, an experience uh, similar to theirs. And um, at this same time now we're coming up to, we had the, uh, after the war you had the Azerbaijan crisis where um, it was almost split, Azerbaijan was almost split off and that was a great uh, you know, shock for the, for, for the, for the country and, um, and then after that, we come to the Mossadegh crisis, which was also a great sort of shock for everybody and a great disappointment to many people. They were hoping to have a, you know, a really full-fledged democracy, which well, then they went back into the monarchy. And, uh, and uh, at that time, after the Mossadegh period, the head of the radio was uh, Mr. Adl, and he had two assistants. One was Mr. Moinian, who was in charge of the um, uh, office and then Mr. Uh, Bande, I think his name was, and he was in charge of the um, programming. And uh, at the same time, there was another radio called um, Radio Nero Hawaii, and they were playing a lot of um, music that uh, had its origins in Arabic and we would say street music type of things. And um, and. And they were getting a great audience, and none of the people were listening to the Tehran radio. And, uh, and so Mr. Hoda Bande decided, uh, Hoda Yar, he said, Hoda Yar decided that he was going to invite those musicians to the radio in Tehran to sing at the radio of Tehran. Now, I'll just give you a clip here, and hopefully it will come up. I'm not exactly sure if it will. And you can see what type of... Um, there were, these, these were singers were like Mahvash, and uh, um, Afat, and they uh, sang, uh, sang, uh, 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 what? <laughs> So you can see uh, the level, okay? It's, it's entertaining and it's funny now even, but this, this was a shock for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for, the, um, for those people and uh, for the serious musicians, and they didn't want to be have, have any kind of association with these people. And so they left the radio, people like Sabah and Adib Khunsari and Tajvidi and Haliri and all of these greats of Persian music, they decided they weren't going to have anything to do with this, and they left. And so this is about at the same time that Mr. Pirnia comes on the scene. And Mr. Pirnia is a man of great social and moral stature. He helped an awful lot in the um, uh, Azerbaijan crisis and resolving that. And his family, very famous. His father the, wrote the history, of, uh, first uh, history you know, uh, of Iran, very important and everything. So he carried a lot of uh, kudos with him. And when he came to the radio and he started this program, he was able to attract these people back because of his name and his stature, and they were willing to come and, 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 and be part of the radio again and, 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 
and work at the radio. And at the same time, you had another uh, important person who took over the radio and became the minister, minister was Nasrullah Muinian. Now, when Nasrullah Muinian came to the radio, um, it was basically a place where everybody's aunt and uncle and uh, cousin that they wanted to give a salary to, they put them on the name of the radio and they never showed up, they just got their salary and they didn't do anything. And it was just total, uh, total disorganization and anybody could do whatever they wanted. Uh, but when Mr. Moenian came, he changed everything. And he, and he, uh, uh, he made uh, uh, commissions for vetting the poetry, commissions for vetting the, vetting the, um, uh, the music, and these were all the highest intellectuals of the day and the best musicians of the day on these committees. And then also, in addition to that, he, um, uh, he, he insisted everybody who was not a bona fide performer was kicked out and their names were struck off the register. And everybody had to sign a contract and had to agree uh, to being a, a, an employee and not just come whenever they, they wanted. And so he put discipline to the place. And this, the, uh, these two things, Mr. Pierniaz's prestige and Mr. Mourinho's or, uh, organizational genius, made, uh, made it a welcome place again for the, for the serious musicians and the good musicians. And so the, bro the program just took off. And um, the first uh, program that, um, that he produced was Golhai Javidan, which was a fairly... A screen? Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, I haven't seen... I need to, to... Let me go back. And tell it to do it again, maybe. Is that better now? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Okay, sorry. Please, if something goes pear-shaped, let me know. Um, so, um, he... The first program that he produced was the Golhai Javidan, which is a very serious program, and it was centered mostly around uh, Sufi uh, poets and, um, and Sufi literature, and they would have some of the most famous literary critics of the time, like Ali Dashti, like uh, uh, Mr. Surat Gar, uh, or Nayir Sina, and they would give commentaries on these poets and introduce them. Now, you have to remember in Iran at that time, you had at least 85% illiteracy. And most of these people could not read or, or write, although they loved poetry, but they couldn't read or write. And so this program uh, was on the medium of the radio. It, was, it went out free on the airwaves. And those people who couldn't afford radios, they would gather in coffee houses to listen to it. And it quickly became almost like a cult program. Everybody, everybody would stop what they were doing to listen to this program. But it had such an effect on the literary and music appreciation of the culture. Uh, many of the divans of the poets, which had not been published before, all of a sudden came into demand. And also people got used to listening to quality music. And they were introduced to who the musicians were, and what the dascars were, and what the gouches were, and everything. And so it, was, uh, it had only, not only the uh, uh, wonderful entertainment, but also it was very instructional and educational. And it changed the way people um, listened to Persian music and, uh, and approached poetry. And these, he produced five um, different types of programs. And you have the list here. Um, and Mr. Pioneer uh, was the director of the programs for about 11 years. And then at about at the time when um, they were uh, combining the radio and television, and that was at the same time that Mr. Muinian left the radio, uh, Mr. Mouinian, Mr. Pirnia decided to retire. Of course, his health was not good also. He'd had a heart attack, and he decided that, you know, it, it wasn't the same place that it was when he came, and so he decided to retire. And he re retired after 11 years, and then it was, um, it was, took up, it was taken up by um, uh, Rahi Mayeri, one of the major poets of the time, and a man named Mirali Mir 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 Nat Bebi, and, um, uh, and they put it together up until 1972 when Hushang Eftahaj um, took responsibility for the programs. And he produced a new type of program called Golhai Taze. And on those programs, um, uh, at that time, also in Iran, there was a movement 
within Persian music, which was called uh, the Bargash movement or the return movement. And people like Lotfi and uh, Kalahor and Mr. Buruman, they were all going back to the earlier traditions of the Gajar period. And Mr. Eptahaj uh, facilitated their, uh, uh, this movement by putting them on the airwaves and making people aware of it. Um, and then um, I'll just give you a few little examples of what the flavors of what these programs were like uh, with some audio clips here. And, hmm, I can find my pointer. Okay. This is a, this is a, a for those of you who are, where's my pointer? Oh, here it is. Um, no, I won't bother. That's Persian, so I won't bother with that one. It was an example of Ali Zashi. This is, in the Golhai Javidan, you had some really unique programs that, you know, remain in people's memory forever. And one of them was um, the performance of, of um, Amir Hayati, uh, Daivish Amir Hayati, of the song Ali Guya. And this became, you know, like a classic, uh, one of the major classics. And this is... clip. This is a clip of Adiba Hunsari. In the beginning, the orchestra was only about five or six people, and most of the people there are in, the, uh, are in that picture there. You have Sabah, uh, uh, Mortaza Majubi, Ibadi, um, uh, Adib, Hassan Kesai, Varzande, all of the, uh, there was only about five or six people in the audience. It, later on, they they branched out when the Golhai Rangal Rang came in, which was the next program after the Golhai Javidan. They, um, uh, they branched out and uh, they had you know, huge orchestras and people like um, uh, Ruhollah Khaliqi and Javad Marufi began orchestrating uh, the songs and introducing elements of harmony. And um, this is a, well, I'll play that clip later when we get to the website. And this is an example of the contracts. Uh, they were all, um, uh, they all were under contract to the radio and the music was all uh, commissioned by the radio. Um, and it became so popular and, this, and the poetry became so popular, um, they used to, uh, and everybody was writing in and asking for copies of the poems. So they began publishing in the radio journal in the, in the end center section of the radio journal, uh, copies of the program. So here you have on one side, it's the Golhai Javidan, and on the other side, you have the, uh, one of the Golhai Rango Rang programs, because they couldn't possibly send out copies to everybody who was asking for them. And then here you have just an, uh, a picture of the different levels that everything had to go through before it was okayed on to, the, um, uh, to, be, to be aired. And so you have the first the, the poet, Writing the, writing the poem and then working it out with the, with, with the musician and then you know, it's, it's looked over by the, by the committee and it goes on and step by step they're showing the people how much care is put into what goes out onto the radio. Okay. And they also, another thing that they did is a lot of the um, compositions that, uh, for, like, p from people like Sheda and Darish Khan, which were composers in the uh, late 19th and early 20th century, um, who a lot of their, some of their um, work was recorded on phonograph, but uh, uh, some of their work was never recorded. And so they recorded these, and uh, so in some cases, new poetry was added to them. And this is an example of one where um, it's, a, it's a song by um, uh, Ali Naki Vazidi, mm -hmm with a poem by Rahim Ayyari. <laughs> I 
And so you can see in the music, it's very orchestrated, and it's much different than uh, the five, six-man or orchestra that they had in, in the beginning. And then, uh, oh, wait a minute. Here. This is a picture of Javad Amarafi conducting uh, the orchestra at the radio, and you can see it's about you know, 25, 30 people, uh, and it's become quite a big orchestra now. And this is a, this is a copy of uh, one of the boxes of, from the, the original boxes from one of the programs called Bagasavs, which, was a, uh, which came in after the Golhai Rangorang, and it was based solely on, on Sufi poetry, and it began with a, with a poem by Attar, um, uh, recited each, each, each one was, began with this poem. So it says, uh, look everywhere you look, you will see the face of the beloved, and this, uh, uh, this, uh, the, this reflection of the beloved is the, the divine re reflection of the divine re beloved. And it begins with that, and then it always ended with this poem by Iraqi. <laughs> So it says, oh, how beautiful it is that anybody who comes to your door is never turned away and will always find an answer, basically. I mean, it's a very loose translation. And these, uh, this is the, the, one of the most famous singers in this uh, group of programs was uh, Zebihi. And he, was, he, he sang at religious uh, gatherings, mostly. And um, he always insisted that he would never sing um, uh, with any accompaniment. He always had to make sure. And, and in all the programs, you see, before he begins singing, there's always somebody declaiming and somebody declaiming afterwards. But he's sandwiched in between two, two declamations, so he doesn't have any contact with music whatsoever. Because it would have really... Um, uh, his business was singing at, at, mu at religious gatherings, so that wouldn't have been very good to have him associated with music. And so, <laughs> but you can see the sort of very serious and somber tone. And basically, uh, for those of you who don't know Persian, he was just doing the introduction there and the uh, cha-cha. We didn't get to any words yet. Um, and, and then we had the Golhai Saroi, which were um, folk tunes that were gathered from around the country. And uh, Mr. Khaleri and Mr. Um, uh, Marufi and, and some others, mostly those two, orchestrated them for the... Uh, um, uh, for the radio, and uh, one of the most famous, of course, people from that era is Sima Bina. She began, that's where she began her career at nine years old, singing on the radio, and now she's, she's been touring all over the world. She's one of the most favorite singers in, um, in Iran. And I'll just give you... <laughs> And that is a, that's a singer by the name of Afshin, and um, no, is it Afshin? His name, his real name is Dr. Afifi, and he was a doctor from Shiraz who loved Persian music and loved folk music, and he had his own collection. And this is, shows one of the geniuses of, Dr., of Mr. Pirnia. Um, and so he had his collection of music, and he sent it um, to Mr. Pirnia just as like he wasn't, he didn't want to be a singer. He just sent it to Mr. Pirnia, saying, you know, these are some folk songs. Maybe they'll be helpful to you in your program, etc. Maybe you could use them. And he recorded some of them. And so Mr. Pirnia liked it so much, he just put it right on the radio. And so you had this medical doctor. All of a sudden, he turns on the radio, and there he is singing, <laughs> which was quite a surprise. And so a lot of the folk songs from the uh, Shiraz area came from... Dr. Afifi, who recorded them, and then some of them were then, uh, but Dr. Afifi himself only, only appears on about four or five of these, of these programs. 
And uh, this is uh, the n another program that uh, Mr. Pirnia uh, invented was the Shahugo. And there are 465 programs of the Shahugo. And these were small, short programs, about 15 minutes. And in each one, a poet was introduced with short introduction, and then their poems were declaimed or sung. And one of the very um, interesting things that you see in this, uh, in this collection is that uh, Mr. Pirinia took great pains to introduce the female poets from the Samanid period down to the Pallavi period. He, uh, there were introductions of these poets, their poems were declaimed and sometimes sung, which was quite unique at that time because, you know, in the literary circles, it was a pretty male-dominated field. Um, and so, you know, he made a point of doing this. Um, and um, let me see what else we have here. This is a, this is a copy of the actual divan that uh, uh, Mr. Pirnia used and, uh, in many of the poems for Hafez. And many, he would select a few lines, and then, uh, and then he, he, wouldn't, he usually wouldn't do the whole Gaza, uh, which is different from what Mr. Eftahaj did. In Mr. Eftahaj's Golhai Teze, you have usually the whole program is devoted to one, almost one author. Uh, but in Mr. Pirnia's programs, you had a lot of mix and match. And it was more, more mix and match on a thematic basis. Where, um, and um, so in any case, uh, that is that. And then most of the major figures in Persian music of the 20th century um, got their start on the Golha and became famous in the Golha. You know, figures like Shah Jarian and Banon, like Elahe, uh, like Marzie, like Puran. I mean, these all became household names. Uh, and they all started out on the Golha. Uh, Gavami, uh, Sahangzadeh, Mahasti, Rahim Ayeri, Bijan Taraki. These, uh, it was the Golha that really made these into, made these, um, this is Humayun Horam and um, Parvin. Um, and then, of course, Roshanak, the most famous voice on the Golha. She, she was the most famous reciter um, of all the Golha programs, Khaliri, and so, and then they only had one public uh, concert, which was in benefit of the, uh, of the earthquake victims of Lar. And um, Mr. Pirnia even made all of the uh, uh, performers pay the entrance fee because he wanted to raise as much money as possible for the victims. And this is a copy of, their, of the program. And this is just, this is a list of the poets. So you can see the range. Um, of poets that um, he, he put into the, into the programs from the Samanid period through the Pallavi period. There are 560 poets in the, in the collection. Their poems are declaimed and sung, and uh, it's a huge, rich encyclopedia of poets uh, from that period. And I've just selected some of the more famous ones in the various different periods, so you can see um, the types of um, uh, the range that um, he has and sometimes you find a poet, he, only one poem he ever wrote in his life, and, and Mr. Pirnia found it. And also the other thing is, among these poets, he always picked the, uh, the most beautiful lines. You know, the, the poet may have only wrote one good poem and the rest were duds, but he would find that one and he would, he would use that one. And um, so that's, and then of course uh, these these, um, these uh, uh, programs then they became so popular that they were put out on 45s and on cassettes and, and uh, they were, were selling like hotcakes. And then you come here, uh, this is a, a picture of Mr. Pirnia in, in his office in his father's house at, in um, La Lazar, uh, Kuche Pirnia in La Lazar. And this is just a, um, a clip of his voice uh, expressing his gratitude, uh, his um, uh, saying how how much it meant to him uh, working on the Golha and to being able to devote his his time to Persian music and literature and thanking some of the musicians. So I just play that for the Persian speakers. <laughs> سیمای هنرمندان ارجمندی که با من همکاری داشتند در دل و دیده هم جلوگه است امروز از آقایان احمد عبادی و جواد معروفی سپاس بدارم که اینایت فرمود سرفرازم داشتند و نقماتی به یادگار نواختند 
نقماتی که همیشه با گوش جان شنیده و خواهد And the other thing is that um, for Mr. Pirnia, uh, the goal of programs were a labor of love. He never took a salary, and he volunteered his time the whole time he was, he was working on the goal hub. Now, I just want to show, give you a brief overview of what the goal hub project has done as far as um, making this available as a research tool for uh, uh, the academic and uh, lay community of a Persian, uh, lovers of Persian music and, and, and Persian poetry. I'll just go on to the internet here. There we go. Switch it out. So this is, um, what? What? Okay, well I'll just, Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Hang on, I'll fix it. Wait a second. Okay. Okay, let me just uh, uh, turn all these things off here. Okay, we got it here. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, now I have to make it smaller because the screen got bigger. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the front page of the website, and of course here we have um, a small, a short, everything on the, on the website is both in Persian and in English. So um, you just click over here, and, uh, and, it, and it will it'll give you the Persian version, if the internet is fast enough. Oh. It'll come. So you have the per everything that's on there is in Persian and in English. And um, I'll go back to English. It's uh, easy. It's the letters are bigger. Oh. Okay. And um, and then we have uh, the uh, acknowledgments of the people who helped out on the program again, Persian English, and then transliteration system, bibliography. We have the bibliography of all the, all the divans. We, what, one of the things that we've done is we've checked all the po poems with the original divans to check the allocations to make sure that the allocations are correct. Because in the 1950s and 60s, many of these uh, uh, poems, uh, were, poets were not published yet. And they were working from Jung's uh, 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 personal collections or poet poems that people sent into the radio. So we checked them all. And, um, uh, and, we, and then we have... Um, And then we have here some uh, endorsements by various um, uh, scholars. And uh, uh, this is one by uh, uh, Shaheen Farhat, the head of the music department, uh, on his opinion of the, uh, of the site and its contribution to Persian uh, music. And, and you can, uh, yeah, there's five or six of them, Shah Jadian, Eptahaj, Homoyun Khoram, and everything. So you can just, at one's leisure, one can go through and see what the experts think. And, then we have here, what we've done is we've made three levels of search um, uh, that you can, uh, ways you can, three levels that you can search the programs. And the first level, you can choose um, the name of the program that you want, and then, and then you can just type in the number of the program that you're looking for, and you click search. Okay? And here you have the names of all of the people who were involved in the program, whether they're singers or writers or whatever. And when you click on any one of them, that section that their, uh, that their performance is in changes color, and you can click on it. And uh, if you have patience, the, the internet will come up, and um, it will begin to play. Um, in a in a few seconds, hopefully. <laughs> Internet seems to be extremely slow. Well, I guess. And maybe you'll have to take my word for it. In any case, uh, it, hopefully it will start playing in a minute. And in the meantime, I'll show you the other features. Um, these are the transcripts, um, which are in Persian. 
We didn't uh, obviously do the transcripts in English. It wouldn't have made much sense. Um, so while you're listening to the, um, to the poetry being declaimed or you're listening to the poetry being sung, then you can read it here. So for students, particularly heritage students, who may have grown up in families where Persian was spoken, but their uh, reading comprehension and writing comprehension is maybe not that great, they can, uh, uh, this, this is a great way for them to improve their reading comprehension. And as you can see, we have identified all of the poems and also the poetic genre of each poem. And uh, so you can uh, read those as you're, as you're listening. And uh, for some reason, the uh, Internet doesn't want to play the sound, but we'll just have to uh, hear that. And then we have all the musical notes for the Taranes. And those ones that we could find that were in printed versions of things, we, um, uh, we scanned and put up. And those ones that we can't, we are writing them. And uh, we have about, there are about 700 uh, uh, Taranes in the Goha collection. And there were about 125 that we found in, from old journals to you know, modern published stuff that we were able to find uh, in uh, printed editions, which we, um, uh, which we have um, uh, scanned and put in. And the others are being written. About half of them have been written so far. OK. And then uh, we have added this feature here, which um, is uh, you can create your own collection uh, within while you're working on this. So like, for instance, if you are working on a, on a collaboration with somebody and you know, another composer or something like that, and you find a particular um, a performance here that you want to send to your friend and collaborate on, you can make your own collection here. And hopefully the link works. Oh, it didn't come in. Oh, well. Uh, for some reason, this isn't showing up. But in any case, um, if it was working, you would have the, it would come onto this list, and then you can email this list to your colleagues or your friends. And also, that in that list, you can just it will play like in iTunes, just go down, 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 and you play each one like that. So you can make your own favorite collection there. And then here we have um, what we call the individual search or search of Mosui. And you can search the programs by any one of these rubrics. Um, so you have the um, uh, name, the singer of the Avaz, the singer of the Tarane, the name of the song, the composer of the song, the lyricist, uh, the poet of the poem sung, the poet whose poems are declaimed. Um, the, uh, uh, and then here you can search by the first line of the poem sung or the first line of the Tarane. And you, yeah, you can choose whether it's, and you only need one word. So if you have one word from the, from, from, the, uh, uh, from the poem, you can find it. So here, if we say starts with, and then we'll type a word in here, Dell, okay? And then, now oh God willing, God willing, the, uh, the speed of the internet will help us. Um, and it should now say select any second now. Okay, now. So then, and then you select your, uh, which one you want from the list. And of course, if you're in the Persian mode, then it would be in Persian, and you're selecting in Persian. But we're working in the English mode here. And then you click, and any poem, anywhere where that poem has been sung in Avaz in the program will come up, and you can click on it and play it. And, but the internet seems to be. This is the Library of Congress, the most advanced country in the world. <laughs> so it's a bit slow. If we were in Korea, it probably would be faster. But, <laughs> but in any case, uh, we will forget. OK, here we go. It's coming now. OK, so here it is. And uh, we can, that gives you the further description. And you click here. For, uh, I, think, I think that the speed of the internet, internet maybe is not fast enough for for these audio um, things to play. Uh, but in any case, you would click on it, and then you could play the, um, uh, the thing that you found. And then we have what we call uh, advanced search. And in the advanced search section, you can select um, several different aspects of a program. And then those programs that contain those various aspects you can, they will come up in a list. So let's say we are looking for 
the Goucher or the melodic se segment of B dot. We want to see something about the melodic segment of B dot. And we want the singer. Well, she didn't sing B dot in Avoz. Um, uh, with the singer will be Shah Jadion. Of course, Mahmoudi Hunsari and Gopal have also sung in, in Bidat. But, uh, and then we want the, uh, the poem to be a Qaza. Okay? And then you click, and eventually a list will come up of all the instances where Shah Jadion has sung in the Gushe of Bidat in Avaz. And um, if the internet um, uh, was fast enough to play, maybe it will be, God knows, we try. Um, uh, you click here, um, and uh, the, it would begin, the, the, the um, recording would begin at the first note of the Bidad Gouche. So if you are trying to compare, uh, the performance of Bidad by uh, Banan and the performance of Bidad by Shah Jarian. In a click, you have it. What? Oh, what's, oh sorry. Oh, okay. This is, okay. In a click, you would have it. And I'm sorry that the, it's the, um, thra the um, uh, speed of the internet hasn't been good enough to play these, but you just have to take my word for it that that's what happens. And also, one of the other features that we have here is that we've used a, a certain kind of uh, application that instead of like here when you click, it would begin at the first note. So you wouldn't have to start at the beginning and then look for what you're looking for and go and find it and whatever. So it just begins right at the first line of the song, the first note of the gouche, and it plays on. And what we're hoping is that this will encourage um, uh, and make easy uh, research in Persian music and Persian literature. And hopefully Persian music and Persian literature will take uh, their, the place that they deserve on the world stage because more people will write dissertations about it, more people will do research on it because it will be easier for them to do that research. And we're hoping to expand the project to, in, to include the indexing of the other genres of Persian music, um, whether it's the solo music or the uh, folk music or uh, the private recordings that were made in people's houses. And since I started this project, people from all over the world have sent me their archives and mm, you know, thousands of real tapes and, and, and gigabyte after gigabyte of recorded music in my house right now is like the, like the museum of, of music of Iran. And I'm hoping with the help of the library and other lovers of Persian music culture, we will be able to make this available in this, you know, academically and indexed fashion so it will be able to be used by composers, by, by, by researchers, and also accessible to just lovers of Persian music uh, who can, you know, have access to these things that uh, is in, a, in, a, in an orderly fashion. So thank you so much for listening. And um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Dr. Lewison, thank you very much. That was wonderful. If you have questions, please get up and ask. Uh, I just want to say that uh, this is being recorded, so uh, your questions uh, will be webcast later, uh, and you're consenting to being filmed. So uh, when you do ask the question, if you could repeat it since there's no mics sure. back there so for the recording. Thank okay. you very much. Yes, please. Not yet, uh, not yet. Um, we're still doing, you know, checking and copy editing and stuff like that. And we're hoping by the end of the summer it'll be available. Oh, the other thing that I didn't tell you that we're also uh, is hopefully going to be incorporated in this. We're planning to scan all of the um, journals to do with uh, uh, performance art. Because right now, um, a, a scholar who is trying to write about performance art in Iran, they have no access to these things. And almost all the articles that you see written about people like Benon, Gamar, whatever, it's all 
even in Encyclopedia Iran, it's all taken from Ravayat, from people's interviews. And, but all of these things were documented in the journals that were written at the time, and the scholars have no access to it. So what we want to do is scan them and index them and make them available online to scholars so that we can have a proper writing of the history of 20th century uh, performance art instead of just uh, uh, rumors. Because if you interview somebody and they're going to say, of course, you know, I was the first one and everybody came after me and I was the best and they all didn't know what they were talking about, whatever. But, you know, you need to use the text. You need to have the interviews that were published at the time and the reviews that were published at the time about these people. Sorry for the uh, postscript. I hope to God it will always be free um, and hope we won't ever have to charge for it. And that's our aim. Um, and uh, certainly this uh, for phase will definitely be free. Um, and hopefully we will be able to, with the uh, help of lovers of Persian art and culture, with grants from institutions, we'll be able to keep it free. Yes? Well, uh, he, uh, the question was, were there any contemporary programs that we would consider? And um, the thing is that um, the material that is really endangered is the stuff pre-1979. Because uh, sir, this is the kind of job that a government should be doing. Uh, but they're not, and they won't ever do it. Because if they, even if they wanted to do it, they would have to censor it so strictly that it would be meaningless. Um, and after, uh, by 1979 and then onwards, uh, technology changed. It's not that, it's, they're not that um, uh, endangered. Um, all the journals are printed on newsprint. They're, they're disintegrating. They need to be saved. Um, uh, everything else is on magnetic tape. It's on celluloid. These things have a shelf life. Uh, and then also, mo you also have most of the artists from 1979 on, they have their own archives. And then they have their own copyright issues. Many of them have published things outside of Iran. This, this is the problem, too. You, then you run into a huge spider web about, you know, copyright. But this material, because it belonged to the radio, and Radio Iran, and in Iran, after 30 years, it's public domain, and they never signed any of the copyright um, commissions. So we don't have those compl complications. Um, and, um, uh, and, and also, this is endangered material. The stuff from 1979 is not, and, and it's the responsibility of the authorities to do that, you know, <laughs> in my opinion. Oh, yes? Well, in the Goha programs, we have um, about 1,500 programs. And they range from 15 minutes to uh, some are as long as an hour. But the majority of them are in the half hour period. So there are about 1,500 programs. So it's about 1,000 hours of audio. Yeah. What do you suppose you get how, how do I get them? Well, um, the first phase was sponsored by the British Library. And um, I went, I made many trips to Iran and a lot of private collectors um, and also private collectors outside of Iran, in Germany, in France, in Canada, um, in California, you know, they were, and also we, my way of doing it, I always did it in a, in a trade, so I would give them whatever I had they didn't have and then I would get whatever they had that I didn't have and we collected the collection that way. And, but I also had the help of, of the Museum of Music in Tehran, which has one of the major collections there um, uh, from a man named Golshan Ibrahimi. They have his collection and they have digitalized that. And then the Rasuli collection, which is another major collection in Iran, a collector in Iran, and that's at the, um, the House of Music, and I had access to that. And also the uh, radio. Uh, I had access to them, uh, and they, were, they helped me also, and we did the same kind of trade thing, because the radio archive is not complete. Um, because after the revolution, during that period when music was outlawed and people, you know, it had dropped off people's radar screen, a lot of the people from the radio, um, uh, they would take a shopping list, and they would give it to the, you know, the tea server. And, and so a lot of things are missing um, for that reason. And many people say, oh, they burned everything. They, were, they didn't, they, because there was a archiva, there was a, um, uh, a, pr uh, a protected archive plus a public archive. So that, there was like a picking place where they would use, but then there was one that was, that was protect, protected archive that nobody could use. So um, uh, 
uh, they were missing some things. When I, when I, um, when I uh, exchanged with the radio, uh, they had 17 programs that I didn't have, and I had 82 programs that they didn't have, which I gave them. Uh, so, you know, that's the way it was, just sort of piecemealing. And then the other things uh, people have sent me, you know, this one is from, well, I have the thousand reel tapes that, some, that I have from somebody. It was a gentleman who lived in, in Shiraz, and um, he, his aim, he was a tar player. His aim was to um, record all of Persian music. And he was a Baha'i, and as the, it came closer to the revolution, he realized that, you know, things were not going to, were going to go pear-shaped for him. And his daughters were um, studying in England, so he came out of Iran with his whole complete archive which he had in Manchester. And then he passed away and his wife wanted to throw it out. And so one of his friends saved it and then his wife decided this is taking up too much room, let's get rid of it. And so she, he found me. And I immediately drove up to Manchester and now it's in my house, uh, waiting for to be cataloged and digitalized and, and put on thing. And then people from all over the world have sent me um, their archives. M those other archives are mostly digital. Some of them are also on reel, some of them are on tape, uh, on, on cassette tape. But the majority of the things that people have sent me, you know, like whole hard drives full of stuff, um, that uh, they're mostly digitalized. How comprehensive for that period? For that period, pretty comprehensive. Pretty comprehensive, pretty comprehensive. But of course, until we get the whole thing indexed. Those things that were radio programs, that's obvious, because you know, there's 720 uh, Taknavos on, so we know. Um, and the same with the Musiki Irani, same Saza 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 all these programs, we know what the number is. But you know, other things, we don't know how many there are. And so, uh, and so they all have to be listened to and cataloged, and then, and then incorporated into the system. But what we've done with this, with this archive, is, with, the, with this database, is we've made it broad enough. We've put in a lot more categories than we would have needed for the Golha. So that l we're thinking ahead, so that it will be expandable in the future. Uh, one last question, and this is the end because we're running out of time. Uh, as far as the female singers, uh, did you get any help uh, from inside Iran after the revolution? Were they willing to give you stuff on Qamar and all the female singers that they had now banned? Well, um, I I the, uh, the radio, yes. I mean, okay. they don't seem to mind it if it's outside of Iran. But Qamar, um, all, of the, all of the extant recordings of Qamar have been, have been anonymously published in Iran um, in a box set. And it's, they do these wonderful things, you know. They, they're not allowed to do it, but they publish it. It looks just so professional, you know, in a box set with all width of index and everything, but you can't find anywhere on there who did it, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you have to go behind corners and, and rumors here and there and then find out how to get it. Um, but, you know, Iran is a huge country of controversy and anything is possible. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. We've run out of time, and I can't thank Jane enough for this is truly uh, preserving Iranian culture and uh, music and heritage. So I couldn't uh, thank her enough on behalf of uh, the library, and then as an Iranian, I really can't thank you enough. Thank you. Really, truly thank you. Thanks for coming. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.